the bread of life. And we ask you tonight to feed our hungry hearts, feed our souls, give us light, give us strength, give us illumination. We believe in you, we are believers in this place. You have gathered your people tonight to bless them. Lord, we declare that we will truly be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please greet someone by your left and right. And please you may be seated. Especially welcome all those following us online. There are a little over a hundred thousand people following us from around the world. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for connecting with us in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of us who are here inside and outside, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. It's a privilege to be here again bringing God's word. Amen. Tonight my heart is indicting a good matter. The Bible says, Yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My heart has been burning to share the things that I'm about to share. And um, the Lord placed it so strong in my spirit. And I believe that tonight's teaching will be the answer to someone's prayer. You don't have to know what it is. Believe me. Say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God comes to change our lives. We have cultivated a culture of receiving the word of God with gratitude and allowing it, allowing it to change us. Those who argue with the word of God are those who fail in life. Praise the word. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It never said in your life It is settled in heaven That's why heaven is the way it is When you now allow his will To be done in your life The same way it is in the heavens Then the word will be settled in your life When the word of God is settled in your life Your life will change like day and night I keep telling us Week after week That we are on a project God is taking us somewhere Hallelujah Many years from now, you will turn back and you will thank me. You will say, thank you for having this. Those who think we are wasting our time trusting God are in for a shock. Because the Bible says, darkness shall cover the earth. It's a prophecy, it's not a discussion. And gross darkness, the people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, Tonight's teaching is a response First an instruction from God But then a response to um, Quite a number of things that, um, Or a number of issues that I've seen With people, families, individuals You know, God has given me the privilege of Talking and counseling people An average day is a very busy day for me because you have different things to respond to ranging from financial issues, marital issues, destiny issues, career issues, health issues, demonic oppression and um, it gives me a privilege as I talk to people every time because it's an opportunity to learn and see firsthand the practicality of God's word. I have families to comfort them over bereavement and at the same time you are celebrating the birth of someone new. Are we together now? You are watching how disobedience is punishing another and you are celebrating the joy of obedience. So you are in between um, experiencing the revelation and the reality of the word of God and seeing the great consequences that comes when we define our own idea about life. I choose to submit to the ways of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So I've had a lot of issues and um, the Lord just gave me a release to really, really discuss it tonight. Please, I want everybody, open your eyes, your spirit. Everyone will be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There are two issues I want to start with. Really, I, I, I just um, felt like starting out 
um, you can call it the part A on a little note since um, Valentine is on <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. I just thought to start from that angle and then just to contribute something. Not necessarily out of pressure, but I think that is useful. I'm a visionary leader by the grace of God and it's important to respond to people according to seasons. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. There, there is, I have seen two evils that I believe if not corrected will destroy a lot of people just as an introduction that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling but just to connect with it there there is a growing fear that I've seen especially among ladies not necessarily koinonia ladies um, as I talk with ladies, as I talk with women, I am a bit concerned at the growing fear. As it regards family life, most especially, the fear of disappointments, the fear of expectations not coming to pass. Then on the other side of the pendulum, I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men especially young men are we together now so there is on one side fear the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies fears ranging from the the projections of late marriage fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that I've been able to see. You know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look... I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So, I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married, so much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing. But just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living. Please pay attention. Living in the 21st century. Alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with cycles of challenges like our generation. Just being alive alone is a challenge by default. Are we together now? This is very, very important. And that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts listen to me ideas redefinition of paradigms and strategies as regards living as regards family life not necessarily a veering off of god's standard but a redefinition of our approach 
are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s. Is that correct? Yeah. So, if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming, there will be big disasters in Christian homes, although born again, although tongue-talking, and many lives we are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society. I have observed personally, now, and if there are, we, we have a number of children here, some very small, some maybe in their teenage. But I have observed with shock most young people from within the ages of, let's say, 19 down to 13. That generation has been violently captured by the devil. That 19 to 13, I don't know what happened to that generation of young people, but there is a disaster. They are. Their outspoken rebellion against the things of God is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the American church. Are we together? Yeah. You study children, most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that. Their outspoken rebellion against the life of God, the ways of God, they are really the technological generation. That's that teenage. And if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas, there will be a very serious challenge. The average Christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting, because it has changed. Back in the olden days, the parents were the principal instructors of a child. But right now, the average child has many teachers. Are we together? The school teachers are just one. The parents are even the least. There are many other things. There's Facebook to teach. There's YouTube to teach. Are we together? Gone are the days where you can, you can off a television and say, sit down and read your book. You off a television, he switches it on on his device. Think about that. The advancement in technology is a double-edged sword. It's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others. So I, I really would want to talk to us. Um, ladies, let me start with you. There are certain things, sisters, I love you and I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. If you listen to me, you will be saved. If you are stubborn and you don't listen, I guarantee you, you would have defined a path that will lead to tears. Are we together now? Say amen. Sisters here doesn't mean people who, maybe ladies who are not yet married, it, just anybody, really. There are certain things a lady must find in a man, otherwise don't marry him. Write it down. I've upgraded my curriculum on this, you will, you will be interested to hear the things I'm going to tell you now. A thorough upgrade, just four things. I've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman I don't care whether the brother has a Bible on top of his head. If these four things are not in place, your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster. Ready? Number one. You have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not God-fearing. Don't be too fast. Allow me to properly define what I mean by God-fearing. Notice I didn't say born again. Because that thing has been abused in the 21st century. A born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witness him raising his hand. That's not born again. God fearing. The primary reason why society is in decadence, listen to me, is because the men are not God fearing. The fear of the Lord is not believing in God. There are two different things. Faith in God and the fear of God are two different things. I can have faith in God and not fear God. Are we together now? 
Yeah. There are many faith-filled Christians who are not God-fearing. And listen, look at this. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. My life is governed by a reference. Listen, the Bible is my reference. Are we together now? My decisions are made with respect to this reference. So, when you tell me you are a husband, what reference are you leading your life and your family with? So many people come to church, but there is no reference upon which their lives, their ideologies, and their decisions come from. So, they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting, and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women. There are many women in the last two weeks, the number of married women have had to counsel, and the pain that the average married woman woman goes through in their home is unbearable they laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret and the sad thing is that most of the men are born again some are even bishops priests sincere people deacons what does it mean to be God fearing to be God-fearing, number one, means to have reverence, respect for God. Not just to believe in God, but to have reverence for God. Let's hurry up. Number two, to be God-fearing means to submit to the ways of God. Submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Write this one down. To submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Not some matters. You, so, you don't mix the word of God and culture. In our place, this is how we do it. No. In our village, this is how it is done. This, this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men. Turned them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture based reference upon which their activities are carried out. Listen, let me tell you something. There is no man that is bad. When they tell you a man is bad, when a woman looks at her husband, when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad, there is, the concept of bad does not exist. There is no man who is bad. Every man is like a video playing out his mindset. It is the thinking, the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad. That is why an armed robber can carry the same body. And in two years, the arm robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people, now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad. Some of them old enough to be my parents. And I've discovered that intrinsically, every man is good. Their approach was wrong. And so their life became a script playing out. Some of you are looking at me now, brothers, as sincere as you are. You are about to replay the same script if you don't change. You will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire. Let me tell you, there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her. Are you hearing me? Nobody. I'm a man. I've been a man all my life. I'm not just being a man now. So you have to listen to me. I know exactly Men are not bad people. But there are concepts that have turned men into beasts. Are we together? A God-fearing person. The word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If wife come. If. Watch this. This is my wife. And. I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is the television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says, my husband, this TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now, to be God-fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness, or at least I, 
to say what does the word of God say about TV? Is the word of God says there should be no TV? What happens to my will? I fold my will to let the will of God prevail. There is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God. The problem is usually the will of the man. And I look at her and say, what part of your dowry didn't I pay? You talk to me, I will slap you. Forget that I'm a man of God. I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? And you know men we are very arrogant people we can be entering hellfire and claim that it's ac we are and drag people in trouble until we get in there and then we say well I, I did not exactly understand the configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect that's why submitting to the ways of god is very hard that's why in most crusades women are more the men don't come they would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle but to come and be healed they feel it's an insult i am a director of a and b and c but tonight i pray that god will raise men who can submit i love the song the worship team sang look there is nothing as excellent as a man especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of God contradicts my concept I bend I don't look for an explanation no sir it is being God fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the Bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man, you are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair, and say, hey, hey, now you are talking, you are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, in due season, Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord Many men do not fear God. Principles of parenting. Do you know that there are families and there are cultures, for instance, that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her, she will know that this is not a stupid, it's not a sissy. I mean, it's, it's a show of masculinity. I senior you in age, in strength, in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone 
Do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is God and your wife and children. You are supposed to change your clothes after some time. You are permitted. As lovely as this cloth I'm wearing is, after a few months it will fade and I'll throw it away and sew another one. So, it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it. But the Bible says you are staying with that woman. So, there's no, you can't change her like a cloth. Meaning you must find out from God what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh. If you change clothes, change phone, change car, and yes, the Bible says you cannot change your wife. You must find out. Lord, and the woman is growing old. So it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful. I told you tonight, my heart is, is inviting a good matter. We are just warming the plane. We must reach that altitude this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. God fearing. Sisters. I want you to bond this revelation. The first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought. Hello? Say hi. Hello? Because some of you, if we don't press you like this, you know, I've discovered in church that many people don't listen. As you are talking like this, they are looking at you. They are even writing. But their hearts are already made up. No, sir. I'm saving you trouble. You will thank me for it. Not everything that glitters is gold. And don't let anyone pressure you, whether parents or friends, and say, after all, what is there? He can take care of us. What is your idea of care? Buy you things? Are we together? A God-fearing man. A man, he doesn't have to be a pastor. Uh-uh. God-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor. God-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours. A man can pray eight hours and not be God-fearing. I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. So you may be Igbo, you may be Hausa, you may be Yoruba, you may be Kaduna State, whatever, North Anand. You may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. The issue of this is how we do it in our place. This is how it is in our place. Our fathers used to, our this used to happen. No, no, no. People do those kinds of nonsense things. Do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people? It's the reason why many marriages are not working. Parenting. So the man has his idea on how to raise children. He got it from his friends. He got it from bad people. Are we together now? Do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents? He just lives with them. It's one thing to live with me. But it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me. That you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you. The Bible said, train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books, bad magazines, rubbish films, nonsense photos and pictures. And by the time that child is 10 or 11 years, somebody else is training him. How does a train move? They are connected. The train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops he says if i catch you with cigarettes i will kill you by myself i've told you smoking is very bad forget that i'm doing it you are not training the child is god speaking to us what i'm saying is a very serious thing God fearing. Number two, ladies, the second thing that you must, in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority. 
for mentorship for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person say amen, amen. very powerful revelation i give you there are many ladies who say ah you are in a relationship i think you should see a pause i see a puzzle for what what, what should I see him for? That's how after he slaps you and you say, let's go and see a post, we say, for what? Listen, no matter how wrong a man and a woman is, if there is someone for them to listen, you are still safe. You are still safe. I've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples. I remember one couple, they fought in Kaduna. It was a brutal fight. Police had to come. Police for husband and wife. And, to, and, and they are Christians. The woman just took, she could not take it that day and she decided that, look, I will try my best. Whatever I would, I will have to attempt this man today. True story. And two of them, after the door settled, the police people told them, look, you are married people, don't make a fool out of yourself. Go and uh, you can, you know, know how to fix things up. Two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me. So they reported themselves and then they came for counseling. Do you know at the end of that counseling, simply because they were people who understood submission, at the end of it, the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her. Nice people. And as far as I know, things are working. It was a very minor issue and all of that. Sisters, please hear me in the name of Jesus. The 21st century has changed things. Some of us, this is the dilemma that our fathers came in. They had been beating our mothers for many years. There are some of us, if there was an authority figure, the divorce would not have happened. There was no one. The man decides he's the God of the family. The day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath, everybody's in trouble. Sisters, the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life. Do you know why? Let me tell you this. Emeka, come. Sweetheart, come. Assuming, stand here. Assuming this lady, Emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her. Do you know if she tells him and says, okay, whatever it is, this is an authority figure in my life and I would like you to see him. Do you know why the man will run away? Because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much. He wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side. Hello? Are we together? So he's hoping that by alienating himself, there are many brothers who claim to love you people. They come and drop you for koinonia and go away. And after the grace, they now come and pick you. That's dangerous. Naomi told Ruth, he said, um, um, Ruth told Naomi, he says, my God will be your God. Your people will be my people. Are we together? Because if I know this guy with this lady, tomorrow if I see her smiling at somebody, I have a right to ask a question and say, ah, I hope that guy is your brother. <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary listen. So what is the issue? And if there is an issue, I will at least try to find out. It's alright if the issues are irreconcilable. But at least that there is some level. There is disorder in the body of Christ because everybody is doing anything. That's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves. Yet the brother can be leading worship. Yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of A and B and C. You will tell this one, I'm mad. just be waiting. You will just, let me just put things in place. While he's doing that, he's already printing a um, traditional wedding card. How many ladies have been heartbroken? A brother that has told them, he has even met their parents. While they are happy, the next thing they just see a wedding card. This is to notify you that the family of A and B is marrying C and D in, in different places. Very careless. And we make the church look stupid. Let me tell you, there's order in the body of Christ. Many people will hear what I'm saying and think, no. Disorderliness will always empower Satan. 
disorderliness of any sort will always empower Satan. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Bless you. Bless you. Number three, very quickly. Are you getting blessed? So sisters, the first thing you should look at in a man, and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this, begin to labor in the place of prayer. Labor generously in the place of prayer. Lord, turn the heart of this man. He must be God-fearing. I've married, the deed has been done. But Lord, you can still step in. You are the God of the second chance. Step in. I will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not God fearing. Bring a jeep, bring a plane, carry hamper for me. That, that all that one is your cup of tea. If you are not God fearing, the first question I'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job. Are you right with God? And you know that you'll not just tell me yes. I said that's all right. Let's go to the next question. No, 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 no. We'll stay there and press it. Right with God means what? Yeah. Right with God means what? You don't just say, I'm right with God. Are, are you a member of what? I'm a member of living faith. Okay, that's all right. No, no. I can, in five minutes through your words, I can know you are just a church goer. You don't fear God. Yeah. Let's restore the fear of God. So that our children will be raised. You send children to school. You have finished training your children in the fear of God. They now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person. Is that not what happened to some of us growing? You left good Christian families. The day they were talking about pornographic movies, you've never known anything like that. And you say, I don't know anything. They say, are you joking? You are 14 years. You've never watched this. And they make you feel guilty for loving God. And it's that guilt that drives you to say, no, I have to educate my mind. And look at what has happened to your life now. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the two times and back. You are on your own. You are God alone. Be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, Apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the world. There are many ladies, if it's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what Apostle said. He says, it's true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crashed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, Apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you. Not love. Passion. 
Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his ego and as your body he says, Sister, I love you. So people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly. Passion. Please look at me. Let me tell you. Any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful. Write it down. Write it down and put my name under. Don't, don't post anything and put my name, but write it down for your consumption. Any man with no passion for his wife, I give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful. It's not if, it's when. Do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80 percent of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives? Statistically confirmed. I told you it's not because they are bad. Passion. It is passion. Passion is more than physical stature and, and, what, and all of these things. Are we together now? Yeah. So, that's why I hate arranging marriage. I'm saying it again. You know it. I've told you. Arra marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say, here is the lady. It's okay. You can suggest, you can recommend and people can pray. But where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day ring is entering your heart. Hey, hey, hey. You are in big, 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 big trouble. Because the man is only marrying a wife, not a friend. It is a friend that sticks it closer than a brother. Any marriage where there is no passion, there must be unfaithfulness. It's not there will be. There must be unfaithfulness. A man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife. He will find an alternative. And what a generation with many alternatives. His secretary is there. If she's not there, the other one is there. If she's not around, another devil is there somewhere in the hotel. If she's not there, a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere. At every given point, there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband. There are certain women, there are spirits that walk in them, only married men. If they see a young man, no matter what you have, it's not their business. But once they see you, you are married. Ah, what a joy. If you complain about your wife, say, ah, what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this? That's right. It's starting. It's starting. That's exactly what the man wants to hear. I'm very serious with what I'm sharing tonight. Passion. When two people come, you know, to introduce themselves, they just come. You see, sometimes they hold hands. It's as if, hey, hey, hey let's marry you. I just, oh God, just calm down. Because these motions are not passion. Passion is not the, the physical exertion. You are all around the lady. That's not passion. Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married. She just says, honey, must we stand outside? Let's go inside. She, she has already known. The man said, no, no, no. I have to take fresh air. What is all this? Vulnerability. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a big secret. There are four sets of people if you are marrying, you have to listen to this thing two times. One, if you are marrying a man of God, we are exposed to people every day. People means options. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, a high profile businessman. Number three, a politician. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number four, a lecturer. Anybody in the academia. If you are married to any of these four people, listen with both ears and add your spirit in it. Because he is exposed. 
As I'm standing here preaching, there are all kinds of pretty ladies. You are not seeing me, but I'm seeing you. Are we together? Say amen. amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. You say, what is going on here? Spiritual father. And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come. Let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting. And say, honestly, well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you know there is trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen, it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look very well. They ask you why I say because I'm a Christian. You are not lying. So looking, it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there. I didn't see anyone. You saw, you saw. It's just that you have self control. Are we together? You must have passion. Must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters, who have not come to brothers yet, I'm talking about sisters, but it's the quality for brothers. Passion. Whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady, it's not enough reason to go and ask them out. That's lack of self-control. Are we together? It is okay that I look at this lady and I'm attracted to her. It's okay. But self-control. That's what they say in the multitude of many counsel, there is safety. Some, the moment you see a lady and she's fine, day and then, even if it's during a prayer session, in the sheet of prayer, say, please, can you see me after... After prayer, did 
discipline. Hallelujah. The next moment, that's your first time. You are even new in the prayer. They have not even confirmed you. You are not a member of the prayer department. You are just arriving that day. You say, sister, honestly, where, where do your parents stay? Let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself. You are a very indisciplined brother. Because you come into a place with structure and authority. And you just come in and do anything you want to do. And sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things. Discipline. Let people come and meet order in your life. Then they are forced to respect that order. Are we together now? Jesus is helping us today. Somebody, somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying. It's very important. Are we together now? Passion. If you are married here, you must pray consistently, brothers, fathers, to keep having passion for your wife, not just your children. Because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married. And you can see and say, Ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him. No. No. You can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me. Like, daddy, how are you? That daddy is, 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 just means I'm available. Gone are the days. You can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl, and say, Ah, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly, my daughter, but he's, he's, he's not fatherly, my daughter at all. It's another dimension on his own. So that you are married. You know, sometimes. Many men deceive themselves. They just think the moment you are married, it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married. No. Our society, it should be like that. But our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry. A ring is just a jewelry for entertainment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship. It's, it's entertainment. So when you wear a ring and say they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. Love and passion. And then the last key. Ladies, I will dwell a bit here today. Never marry a man who is irresponsible. That's the last point. There must be a demonstration of responsibility. 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 Many brothers are irresponsible. Christian brothers inclusive. Irresponsible. Tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life. Taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life. I don't mean money. That anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh-uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Overpampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still overpamper a man. Let me tell you how they overpampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes, you say, ah, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by 4 o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's 5 o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home just like mommy said. Obedient child. 
Nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained. Come home. In America, from 12 years, 12 years old in America, you see children looking for something to do. Post office. Ah, there, there's no chair for us. They always expect to be recipients, not contributors. It's not your fault. That's why I'm helping you tonight. Many brothers are like that. They are born again. They love God. But anything that discomforts them a little, uh -uh, they don't want it. It's irresponsibility that produces laziness. Laziness. Get up and do something. You have a meeting for 5 o'clock. It's raining heavily. I say, Kai, oh. Quarter to 5, please. Uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Kai, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in, in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. It's the wife that works, pays the children's school fees and the man is alive. Two hands, two legs. He gets up in the morning, sits at the veranda of the house. They are playing draft together with other colleagues, irresponsible men who come, they form a team and they just play, where's your wife? Uh, you know she's a nurse, she works in the hospital you know women, she will come in the evening the woman will return, there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it, but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing there are too many irresponsible people there are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God but an irresponsible one. Responsibility. So you must look at it. Responsibility is not having a car. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is not having a house. That's not responsibility. That's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake. Responsibility is not having a car and a house. Please listen. I can have a car and a house by the privilege of access. It doesn't mean I'm responsible. So stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible. Eventually it's an index that will show responsibility. But responsibility is from the heart. The willingness to grow, to press. The willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life. Don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is working on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life. Because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after koinonia, you send him a text. Say, please. Sorry I've delayed you, but the answer is no. Because you are not God-fearing. You don't submit to any authority and you don't want to. He may not know, but is he willing to now that he knows? Are we together now? Yeah. Number three, do you love me passionately? No. You passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming, you just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that 
the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the first one. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give. Thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man. Nothing changing. Gender irrespective. The same God fearing. God fearing meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. Many ladies don't respect God. They respect themselves. They respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, You're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you're a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh-uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh-uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl, she's just growing old. Come to us, we, we, we have our legs and you, say, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for rainy days? What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-sugar uh, son or ex-whatever it is, and call the person after many years? A woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere. How are you reporting her husband to the small boy? And the small boy says, How will we do now? I say, Can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree? Just the, the way we used to meet before. You are married. The the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships, even in her marital home. I will say it all. My name is Joshua Selman. The average lady still has affiliations. I tell you this. You know I'm not lying. Some of you as you are looking at me, you know it's true. Although you may be married, but you still call John. And it's not just brotherly, how are you? Is the family okay? No, John. I need help. You have to help me. This is my husband. You know he's a stupid man, John. Say, as it is always, you, you know, we know ourselves. He said, no problem, John. Can you do the transfer now? Praise God. That's why they are not faithful. That's why they are not desperate to change their husbands. When they come for prayer meetings like this and they say, if your husband is not doing well, pray. They are not praying. They know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested. So they rather just other people pray. And you see the woman just praying, just looking around. Because whatever happens, there is a. Well, you don't say concubine for a man, do you? Somebody somewhere, an affiliate. <laughs> 
people they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not. Submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well, no matter how long you have been going out. Submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says, that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship, my blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message. Because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster. No guidance. Submit to the man at all times. And it starts from the relationship. It's not when you get married. No, it starts from the relationship. I know submission is not foolishness, but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well, and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If it's deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If it's counseling, they will manage his treasures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. 
There are many people like counsel. And it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened. And they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like planting. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So, choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now, I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit in a habit of sitting with groups they travel to this state there is a group and they sit down and lambast their husbands they talk all kinds of nonsense reveal family secrets bedroom secrets that are not for the consumption of the public and when they finish they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men they will not your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person who won't publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, Look, I remember what you did to me. This or that. Because we don't keep quiet. The Bible says that even a fool, when he's silent, is regarded wise. The Bible tells every woman to cover her head. There is a dimension of physical covering, but there is a dimension of spiritual covering. Cover your head, the head over your life. Protect him. Protect him. He is vulnerable. Protect him. Are you getting blessed? Sacrificial. Listen. No matter how rich you are. No matter how blessed you are. A time must come in your relationship and your marriage. When you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times. When God can give an instruction. Promise, so that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment. I don't teach irresponsibility, but there are times God will give that instruction. And for those times, it will require sacrifice. There are times, because you want a good education of your child, you will constrain certain things. Please, we cannot go to London on vacation. One day we will go, but for now we cannot go. Let us use that money to train our children. But there are many women they won't hear. Other women are going. Even those who are your genius in office. But we, we are here. No. Unhealthy comparison. Hospitality. I don't want to talk about that. Sadly, there are ladies who are not hospitable at all. You will buy bonds together with a friend. You are just with the friend. You will eat the bonds. Eat the second one. Eat the third one. Squeeze the leather and try. Say, guy, this bond self is not very sweet. You will never give it. Even to say, please take. You give them once. If they say no, you refuse. Because you never meant to give it. Stingy attitudes. And that kind of thing translates in a home. Visitors who come to your house and sit down for hours. They are discussing critical issues with your husband. There are even women, men of God who come to their house. And they won't do anything. When the man is about going, ah, when we are warming rice, please. I stayed in your house for two hours. Warming with rice. Even if you are cooking it, it will be done by then. Ladies, listen, listen, listen. Please don't laugh. It's a serious thing. It starts from your attitude in the hostel. Your pot is your own. Your corner is your own. Your everything is your own. Your shoe is your own. Your water is your own. Your Bible is your own. Your bedsheet is your own. 
That's how everything will be your own. Even when you get married, you will demarcate it. Husband, this section of the house is for me. This one is for you. This one is for the children. There are many people who cannot give. They like taking, but they cannot give. Me, ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body, he will keep buying for me. Oh. Because to buy 200 naira recharge card, he said, What will I do? He's already rich. That's he's the one that asked me out. I didn't ask him. All that, those stupid Nigerian film type Y sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives. No, sir. Sacrifice. Say sacrifice. You must learn to sacrifice. Many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial, they feel cheap being sacrificial. We have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice. So they come to a guy and honestly speaking, all this guy has is a small room and all of this, but God is helping him. And no, 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 no. That attitude of sacrifice is not there. I want tomorrow now. Now, I want tomorrow now. They say we should do this, this and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I, I mean, you can take my hate here. You won't hate him for your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before, he gave her 10,000. As if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with. And you want to swallow him. Only 2,000. Okay, I'm grateful. You are saying you are grateful, but your body language for that remaining one month Kai, is being shameless. It's not good training. Hallelujah. You come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything. Yet, just because he loves you, you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his ATM and control his destiny. The only person permitted to occupy that position is Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. There are many brothers suffering under the hands of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient. You don't eat tomorrow today. Are you getting blessed? Brothers, the last thing is now the physical factor. Are you seeing that it's now I even brought the physical factor? It must be in that order. That's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at. She beautiful, she all of these things. Listen, as I have known God more, truly let me tell you this. As I have known God more, and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have walked in this life, I have found out that all these physical things they are important, but sincerely, let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart, they will fade like a leaf. They will fade and vanish like a leaf. I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Joss when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man. He used to be my principal. And that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important. But when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God, are we together now? Supersedes, what's the second one? Submission to the man supersedes whatever. You've heard me say it again. You just come and meet a lady. There are serious issues. Maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-Christians. You know what I mean? And she's the only Christian. She's saying, sorry, oh, this is the family you are going to. You didn't settle down to pray. You say, no problem. You are too fine for me to let you go. You are in trouble. My mother is a witch. It's okay. I love you like that. And me, I'm telling you, she's a traditional. Pra I know. Don't, don't worry. There's koinonia. There's miracle service. And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. 
I can't have a child. That's a little what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You will now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. As if she didn't tell you. You see it. Please, spiritualize. Spiritualize your process of getting a wife. Don't be carnal. Don't sit with brothers and say, have you looked at this one? What do you, what can you say? It depends on who you are talking to. If you are talking, if you are talking to a brother who is not born again, you are in trouble. He will give you the counsel of Achitophel. And after two years, you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade. Say Amen. God-fearing, submissive at all times, sacrificial, hospitable. Let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Write it down. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Please give us First Timothy 5 verse 8 quickly. Brothers, I want to talk to you now. I want to talk to everybody, but specifically to the men. We need responsible men in our society. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Is that possible? If that's not possible, I would look for it. Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says, provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially. Meaning, first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of consequences. An awareness of consequences. That if you do this, there is a consequence. If you do not do this, there is a consequence. Responsibility is an awareness of consequence. I identified a few reasons here where people are, why people are generally not responsible. Let me talk about them for a few minutes. Number one, the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment. The reason why many brothers, many sisters, but brothers especially, may never get established is indecision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. I want to eat rice, that's a wish. I want to eat rice, but I will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it. Or I will go to the market to cook it. That's a decision. Backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it. There are many brothers wishing, wishing through prayer, wishing through reading books, wishing through receiving prophecy, wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service. No, wishing does not pro provide an answer. Indecision over being successful. Look at me. God is speaking to people here. I preached, the first message I preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called, come out of your father's house. That message blessed people in no small way. There are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young. I'm, I'm young, you know. I am 20. I am 30. Even 40, you say you are young. Are we together? You must learn to take responsibility over your heart your life. If anything will be done, you will have to contribute in making it happen. Indecision. You've never made a decision to rise up and be serious. You've made a decision to marry. You've made a decision to have children. You've made a decision to fantasize. But you've not made a decision to be diligent 
diligent and say no I'm tired of the way my life is Lord Jesus things have to change look let me tell you something there are brothers listening to me right now and some following online this night should be your night of decision many years ago I got I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person I, I was a vow that I took with God are we together exactly 14 years ago in fact 15 years ago exactly 15 years ago I made that decision that I was going to be serious and be responsible the first book I bought was discovering your purpose by Dr. Mike Murdoch Dr. Miles Munro and I sat down when I read that book I cried I remember writing it I still have the book till today it was a vow that I wrote I will be a responsible man of God I will be a, a responsible father I will be a responsible husband I will be a responsible leader decisions how do I know you have taken a decision to be successful when you stop making excuses excuses the language of irresponsible men I would have done it but it's not my fault you too you understand no sir stop making excuses Nigeria is in recession that's why no men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men and that includes women too of course number two admit your mistakes that's how I know you have decided to succeed admit your mistakes admit it oh I was careless in this area I admit number three stop blaming other people for your problems many young Nigerians like this we blame government we blame all kinds of things we blame demons we blame our father my father didn't train me well at my age look at it's now I'm entering 100 level it's not the best but now that you have entered take responsibility take responsibility there are too many people in anger blaming people they didn't pay my school fees the reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father okay I agree I sympathize with you but now that you are in Christ is God speaking to us tonight His teaching is becoming hot Koinonia is quiet. I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal. Stop making excuses. Brother, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are making the same excuse since you were 15. You are 31 now. Stop making excuses. Your father drove your mother when you were 9 years. Now you are 20. You are 20. 11 years ago. Get over it and move forward. Oh, Apostle, I was raped when I was two years. I'm sorry. I feel very bad for you. But the God of heaven has helped. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening. But get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him. And they'll send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. When, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that. Trouble. Stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years that's a wasted life indecision have you made a decision that you will succeed brothers look at me have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority don't say amen have you made a decision have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months. Madam Shiv, one small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? 
Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates. Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. When you make a decision to be successful, you will stop immediately. You stop being a small child. The concept of small child is not by age. The moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused. That's why people are free. 10 o'clock, you see them moving around. Drinking sugarcane on the road, eating carrots on the road, just moving around and they say, I'm lost. I don't know. And say, You are free. Are you, are you free? Say, Yes. Where are you going? Man, I got one movie. There's one new computer game. That's a man who has not made a decision to be successful. Because when you make that decision, your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime. You will be too busy. You have to even receive grace from God to think about marriage. Many people are not purpose driven. By 9 o'clock you've slept. You wake up by 6 because you are free. You still sleep back. Wake up by 12. You wake up, you are still free. You still sleep back. You spend from 4 to 5 making calls. Disturbing visionary people. How are you? It's been a while. I say, sorry, I'm working. Why are you treating me like this? Is it because I don't have money? Let's talk, Jare. And the person is saying, I'm busy. And you call it pride. May you be too busy for your enemies to distract you. May you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping, talking nonsense. There are many of us, our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything. Because you are not working. You don't do anything. People will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house. Your, your house is the meeting place. Everybody talks about their marriage. They talk about their children. They talk about everything. You are the recipient. No. Be too busy. Be too busy. Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? He said, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this, and I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, Come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old, they cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money, is becoming scary as I counsel people and being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter 
in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning. She's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, "Uh uh-uh, you are enjoying, no? Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Ah, ah, my God, look at this car. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think it's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me. Listen to me. Who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judges, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He said, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Kai, parents, we need, we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around, you are seeing. It looks like they are healthy. The, 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 aside from the spirit in them, 
Spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head. They land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind of that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. They look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. From tomorrow, they are selling cakes now. Selling balloons. Selling letters. Selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves. About to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them... Their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys, no. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband, the owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, Look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV. And left two of them taking care of themselves. I asked the lady, How have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring, I laugh. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said, She has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't. Eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21, verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities. Wasted relationships. I'd like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh -huh. But a foolish man spended it all. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a tither at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. .5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis. Many people go and collect loans from the bank. Instead of them to buy a simple car, they buy different kinds of cars, move around to prove a point. You are earning 20,000. You are buying a material of 50,000. 
and you wait and everybody around you does not know. Let me show you how Satan cheats Africans. There are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? Of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering our hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waste. And we pastors have been victims of this. Because in an attempt to help people become successful, we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working. And in an attempt to show that the world is working, the money that God gave the guy to help him, he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith. Faith is not foolishness. You are in 200 level, you are wearing a, 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 a weapon of, of 20,000. No. There are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week is spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is just it. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your barber comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying, you are flying away your destiny. Whereas, with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially women of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike! Miracle service! People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selma, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I'll pass through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when, anytime they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. 
Some things they are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet, before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere, you've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? Suit, 100,000. There is a particular anko that this group, where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they be like that they are your parents? Must they dress in anko? Please hear what I'm saying. You know. If eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. 2 years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigerians for January to November finishes in 3 days. 3 days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here. You have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters. You have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you, book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I entered it. I, I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, No, 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 I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a person. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money. Simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees. And the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God. And there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be.
whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is no body, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, it will not become a giant oak tree in one day. But there's potentials for it. Are you together now? Yeah. There are people some of you admire. If you saw them 10, 20 years ago, you will not like them. But faith. I saw one man of God. When I saw his picture, it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist. You can use measuring tape and tie the waist. His wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be responsible. You be responsible and you sit down. You are stingy, you are greedy, you are in a relationship. Valentine is coming, you are pretending like you don't know. Plan! You must do something on Tuesday. Plan! Plan! You have today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning. Plan! So that you don't take for granted and say, because some of those things are laziness. Please, we must balance it. Brothers, you must be serious. Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand, just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be at the rate you are going with your life? At the rate of your mindset? At the rate at which your understanding is? What kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry. 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 Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship, lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? I am a lady and I've allowed a wrong mindset, a materialistic mindset, a mindset that is carnal to consume me. I ask you for help. Lift your voice and pray. If every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere, please lift your voice and cry to the God of God. Lord, I'm not being responsible as a father. Pray, you're connecting with us online. Pray, I'm not being responsible as a husband to my wife. 
to my children. I take responsibility tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, take away every spirit of indiscipline, laziness, and wastage and irresponsibility. Let it live my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Laziness. Mental laziness. Entitlement mentality. Waiting for father to do this for me. Waiting for mother to do this for me. Flimsy excuses. Are you praying? Please pray, this is your destiny. Pray, this is your destiny. Pray, this is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship, wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life. Let them be scattered now. I don't care how long. Any wrong friend, wrong associate, wrong whatever it is. I break it now. I break it now. Any association, I break it now. I was not a thief until I joined certain people. And they made me to be a thief now. I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals. Break free from those relationships. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage. I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family. Right now, I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father. Financial direction. On what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything. Direction on how to go as a pastor. Direction on my marriage. Direction on a life partner. Direction. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point before the last one. You are going to say, Lord, walk in me and walk on me. Anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife. Anything. Don't pray for husband yet. Lord, whatever makes me a bad wife. Whatever makes me a bad husband. Whatever makes ladies run away from me. Whatever makes men run away from me. I humble myself tonight. And I ask that you take it from me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Lift your voice and pray. What is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper? 
away from me. What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blame. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we are done for this night. Listen carefully. We are going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now I tell you the line is very slim if it's to follow everything justly by God when will you write jam and finish strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition you need help brothers it's neither by strength nor by power. When I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result, I played my role and ran to God. I, I want to give you the next two minutes. I don't know how you will pray this prayer, but you are going to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I will move forward. Oh, I, I am tired. Please cry, 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 cry. God can help men. Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is peace. There is advancement. Help me, O oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. When all things that surround Become shadow in the light of you. That's what happens in his presence. So we are exposed to the power of his spirit, the impact and the influence of the spirit of God upon your life. He's the one who causes the word of God to come alive in your spirit, sets you above, shakes you out of every excuse that men can have. And places you in a position where you can rule and reign with him. Hallelujah. That's what God is doing in this place. God is separating us, building us, so that we can truly rule and reign with him. 
so you will experientially rise to that realm where you are above the limitations of this system for the bible says we have been raised up together with him and we have been made to sit and so we demonstrate to creation that our concept of jesus being king is not just a religious opinion it is true that's why he called us witnesses a witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true and we were not there when jesus died we were not there when he resurrected but the spirit of god who was there lives in us and he's the one who walks in us so that although we were not there because of his ministry in us we will prove that it is true that's what makes us witnesses thank you lord thank you for your presence we give you all the glory we will never get too satisfied with your presence oh i sense the sweet presence of the holy spirit just lift your hands i sense the strong anointing of the spirit can you just lift your hands everybody inside and outside for a few minutes and let the glory of god i see his anointing and his power let it rain let it rain see the strong presence of god moving all over this place Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. The sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. Open the floodgates of heaven. Help me worship us. Let it rain. Open Salamaria. Gates of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, there's no transformation. There is an activity of the Holy Spirit in you. That's what makes you become supernatural. And so when we expose ourselves in the atmosphere of the Spirit, we are not only changed, we are empowered. The kingdom life is not just a life of words. He said the kingdom of God is not in words. We are not talking of falling down. That's not the power. An empowerment comes from the word energy. An energizing of your spirit man. 
there is an ability of the spirit that is activated in you so that although you are an ordinary man you are empowered to do the things that are beyond your human capacity how shall these things be Mary said he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you that's why we get the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo to be immersed in a flood such that you are not seen again that you be immersed that's what koinonia is about intimacy that you become immersed in the fullness of the presence of the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit there's no empowerment without the Holy Spirit you never leave the supernatural life without the Holy Spirit you remain under the limitations you try to get what you call the word of God without the Holy Spirit it will turn into religion it's the Holy Spirit who makes the word spirit and life he's the breath of God the one who came upon Adam dust and quickened that dust to become a living soul the Bible says we are of the breed of the second Adam who is not just a living soul but a quickening a life giving spirit tell him Lord change me by the power of your word and your spirit tonight go ahead and pray please do not make it a religious experience God is really changing people and you can be that person tonight expose yourself to the atmosphere of his glory I see miracles, signs and wonders in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders. See, Lord, I receive. of beauty there is a dimension of power and of glory that he brings strength for weakness audacity for timidity grace glory attributes of his presence when the spirit of God is alive in you he begins to produce the traits of the kingdom brings you to that point where there is nothing short of beauty and glory that emanates from your life and all that see you will know that there is a fragrance of his presence upon you it's not about your age it's not about your gender it's not about your level of experience it's about his glory it's called the glory kabod the weight the manifest weight of God upon your life turns an ordinary person into an awesome one hallelujah hallelujah listen to me inside and outside listen we have an assignment we are not visionless people we are not just church people trying to preach are you listening to me 
we have an assignment every time we stand upon this pulpit we have an assignment a mandate given from God the mandate is to expose your spirit man to the light and the glory of God's presence so that you are empowered by the activity of his spirit you are equipped by the knowledge and the revelation of the kingdom it's a rule thou in the midst of your enemies it's our job to bring you to a point where you don't just cram scriptures and no verses but you come to a point where you understand the patterns of the kingdom the bible says he showed the nation of israel his acts but his ways his principles his methodology he showed moses whenever you lay hold of kingdom principles you can reproduce results again and again hallelujah that's why above and beyond the manifestations of the spirit our goal is not just to have people fall up and down our goal is to equip you with the revelation of god's word the greatest asset that any man can have in this life is not just a bible it's the understanding accurate understanding of the word of god empower you to rule you don't rule by your human strength in this realm understanding is what leads the way he said in all your getting get understanding many of us are coming from different christian backgrounds full of religion and philosophy that are only a form of godliness without the power that can cause transformation we are still under the bondages of satan oppressed by demons living in poverty and lack not knowing our assignment moving without vision and without purpose and the lord brings you to a point where the kingdom of god is redefined not just as a religion and a movement called christianity but a life life of victory a life of intimacy bringing you to a point where you understand that as we fellowship with the holy spirit we have partnership with him you and the spirit in partnership building the kingdom of our father advancing the frontiers of his kingdom becoming agents of national transformation this is our assignment lord we brace up our spirits tonight even as your word challenges us again bring us to that point of understanding oh god deliver us from the religion of church Deliver us from the religion and the traditions of men, the religion of Christianity. And bring us into the fullness of the life of God's glory and power in us. And cause us to be relevant in our generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Walk up to ten people, just love them, give them a wonderful hug. Make sure you do that smiling. You are citizens of the same kingdom. You are citizens of the same kingdom. Praise your name And I have no fear Of what tomorrow bring Can we sing this song just for one time? I leave I leave To praise your name I have no fear whatsoever I have no fear Of what tomorrow Come on, celebrate your future Your destiny Your heritage in Christ Praise your name. I have no fear whatsoever. I have no fear. I will tomorrow. Talk to someone. Talk to someone and prophesy. Say I leave to praise his name. I Come on. Praise your name. And I have no fear. And I have no fear. I will work tomorrow. Bring. For the last time. I leave. I leave. Of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave. Yeah. 
God bless you. Please be seated. There's no fear. There's no fear. It's amazing. Listen. Listen to me. It's amazing how many people live. Do you know how destructive fear is? Hallelujah. Fear can be so destructive. Let me tell you something. There are three... There are three levels of fear that Satan uses to oppress people. This is not my message tonight. I just felt like challenging us. Listen carefully, inside and outside. There are three levels of fear. Number one is fear from your past failure. Satan uses the fear. I was discussing this with a dear lady. The fear from your past failures. And so every time you want to move forward and the word of God challenges you to do great things for the kingdom. Every time you want to take steps of faith, the fear of your past failure, not just the fear of your past. You don't fear your past success. You only fear the past failures. And so Satan begins to tell you how many times you tried and tried again to catch fish throughout the night and nothing happened. When you conquer the fear of past failures, then you are ready to brace up for a victorious life. Hallelujah. Number two, fear that comes as a result of ignorance. There is fear that is as a result of ignorance. People say when fear knocks the door, call faith. It depends on what you call faith. Faith that is born out of religion will open the door and see fear standing. The antidote to fear that comes from ignorance is knowledge and understanding. He said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt and she shall promote thee. He said, she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her. Doth not wisdom cry. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So there is fear that comes. How many of you have found yourself being afraid if we are going to do it, an interview right now on scriptures and the Bible? I'll be so confident. But the moment we are going to do an interview over cooking, I'll start fidgeting. The same me who was confident, who was, who was very confident a while ago. You know why? Because I have not mastered the laws. So I'm afraid of embarrassing myself before people. Are you listening to me? There is confidence that comes. From the knowledge of the word of God. The operation of the principles of God. Many believers who do not expose themselves to the knowledge of the word. And many believers live in this category. Hallelujah. If I'm sleeping and a demon appears in my room. I'll not even pray about it. I'll just keep sleeping. Knowledge that sets you free from fear. Are you listening to me? If someone looks at me today and says, Joshua Selman, I want to announce to you that you are a failure. I'll say, God bless you. Glad to know your opinion. And that ends it. There is confidence that comes from the revelation of the word of God. Are you listening to me? If someone tells me, do you know you are going to be poor in this life? No, it's too late. I'm not just trying to claim it or pray about it. It's too late. It's not too late because of Naira and Kobo. It's too late because the word of God has been engrafted in my spirit, number one. Number two, my heart is already committed to obey the principles of God. Are you following me now? That's the second level of fear. The third level of fear comes from the opinion of other people. It's amazing how many people are unable to live the fullness of their lives because we allow what people to think about us. What would they say? What will this person... The condition to be criticized is that you are born of a woman. Full stop. Satan is destroying people who are criticizing him. Jesus is blessing people who are still criticizing him. The condition... Listen, hear me. If you do not conquer the fear that comes from the opinion of others, you will never make headway in life. I'm preaching to somebody this night. Hallelujah. I refuse to let the opinion of others make me ashamed of believing the word of God. Someone looks at me and says, can this young guy be a Pentecostal blasting tongues? Your opinion is has no effect on me whatsoever. The future will tell whether I'm wasting my time or not. Are you listening to me? We worry too much about people and what they say. You want to come to church. 
and you are wondering how ah, my roommates they are gisting about something now they are going to wonder are you kidding let me tell you something the fear of people is conquered based on the conviction you have over what you are doing your depth of conviction is what gives you audacity in spite of what people are saying if somebody comes to hold my hand and say i know you or when we we're growing up i mean you 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 are now the preacher i mean that's that's it it i mean it it doesn't even bother me are you listening to me there is a depth of he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded persuaded somebody comes to tell me okay don't you think this Holy Spirit thing you're doing is too much? Why don't you strike a balance? Are you kidding? Or someone comes to say, Are you really sure Jesus is alive? That's even the worst. Because I've seen him. I didn't just read about him in the Bible. I know he's alive. Not just because I read it in the Bible. I have seen him. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, this is what we teach. Are you listening to me? So the first encouragement tonight is that you must conquer fear. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout it like you believe it inside and outside. Amen. I conquer fear. I, conquer fear. I, refuse I refuse to fear. My God is alive. My God is alive. The word of God is true. The word of and God will not fail me. Yes. God will not fail you. Jesus was not playing games with you when he hung on the cross. Are you listening to me? No matter how much you are playing games, he stops when blood starts coming out. Jesus was certainly not playing games on the cross. A 33 year old man hung naked upon the cross. He's not playing games. And he died to not just bring to us a life of purpose, but a life of victory. Are you listening to me? It's not just enough to live a life of purpose. You must live a life of victory. Your victory is proof that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to be teaching. I'll teach briefly. I want us to pray. Revelations 5 I'm only challenging us tonight I want to provoke something in your spirit man As we pray Hallelujah I started by saying It's not just enough to live the life of what You must live the life of There are many believers who are purpose driven But they are not victorious When you are not victorious It will frustrate your being purpose driven Jesus didn't just die to give us vision and give us a life of purpose. He died to bring us into victory. A victorious life. Hallelujah. And tonight very briefly I'm teaching on reigning with Christ. Reigning with Christ. To provoke us to be conscious of the fact that we are supernatural beings. Hallelujah. One of the interesting revelations, please look up. One of the interesting revelations about the four living creatures as shown in the Bible. Um, in the book of Revelation chapter 1 and, when, and chapter 4 also when John the Revelator began to describe the four living creatures. He said something very briefly just to establish what I'm sharing tonight. Number one, he said he saw a living creature with the face of a lion. Say after me, a lion. Number two, he said he saw a living creature with the face of a calf. Number three, one of the living creatures had the face of what? A man. And finally, had the face of a flying eagle. What kind of mystery is this? I hope you realize that everything around the throne is a reflection of who God is. Hallelujah. Everything that God does is an outward manifestation of all that he carries. That's where we get the word glory. The fullness of the essence of all that God is. So when he says he desires that the knowledge of his glory covers the earth. He wants people to comprehend as much multifaceted dimensions of him as they can get. This is why there are 6 billion people moving across the earth today. Hallelujah. 
everyone mandated to reveal a dimension of God's glory. And with 600 or 6 billion people, if everyone walked in purpose, we will still not scratch a minute portion of all that is contained in the person called God. Hallelujah. The face of a lion corresponds to the book of Matthew. Reveals God as king. Talks about dominion. His power. The face of the living creature connotes the dominion, the power, the strength, the ability of God. It's an ability that comes with the knowledge of the word. It's called exousia. Power of attorney that comes when you can stand to represent one in his capacity. Hallelujah. So the first living creature reveals God as a mighty one. Hallelujah. The second talks about the face of a calf and it reveals Christ as the servant. Hallelujah. It's not just enough for you to know that Jesus is king. You must understand that he became a servant. When he walked upon the earth, he walked as a servant. He washed the feet of his disciples. He served, leaving a pattern that everyone who wants to become like him, it's not just enough for you to know your right and your dominion. You must embrace the spirit of a servant. Are you following me? In fact, the greatest in the kingdom, according to the teachings of Jesus, is the one who serves. The word minister is the word servant. Not Lord, as many people put it. Number three, the face of a man. Jesus Christ expresses his humanity. Jesus wept. Jesus was hungry. Jesus ate. Jesus was tired. Hallelujah. He expressed his humanity. That means there's nothing wrong when your humanity emerges in your journey to love God. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Bible says, though weeping endures. Many times we teach people to strangle their humanity as proof that they are Christians. The Bible doesn't teach that. There is glory that is derived from your humanity. When Jesus cried, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabatanai, He gave us an expression that this was a human going through that excruciating pain. And so there's nothing wrong with your humanity except for the fact that without the others it is incomplete. The fourth reveals the king as a divine supernatural person. The face of the flying eagle corresponds to the book of John. Hallelujah. So Matthew reveals Christ as king. Mark reveals Christ as the servant, the calf. Luke reveals Christ as the man. And the book of John reveals Christ as the divine one. It's in the book of John that three chapters were dedicated to the Holy Spirit. 14, 15, 16. And he began to talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not discussed so much in other chapters. Are you listening to me? And so, it's not just enough to let you know that you are a servant. You know, we have been trashing the issue of character. We have been trashing the issue of manifesting the character of the kingdom. Living by the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Not bowing to Baal. Allowing God to lead us through the process of greatness. Hallelujah. We have been able to establish in our lives the concept of the kingdom. By now you understand that success is not about money. Success is about people. Impacting people. Blessing lives. Letting the giftings and the blessings of God in you become a blessing to others. But it's not enough if we stop there. Are you listening to me? We must provoke you to a point where you realize that you are supernatural. Say after me, I am supernatural. You are all supernatural. The divine life of the spirit is at work in you. Do you realize that you are not, if you are born again in this place, you are not just living by your biological life. 
It takes the Holy Spirit to help you believe this. That you're not just living with your biological life. The Bible makes us to understand that we are partakers of this divine life. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, According as His divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. He said, This has come through the knowledge. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us Into glory and virtue. Hallelujah. There is a manifestation of the divine life that the believer must come into terms with. Because, you see, this biological system, this social system has many ills. There are sicknesses, there are demons, there are challenges. And... If all we have to show the world is that we are visionary people and purposeful people, it's not enough to crown him king. There must be that supernatural dimension. We must demonstrate to the world that we have been raised up with Christ. And that today, experientially, we are living and reigning with him as kings and priests. So briefly, I'll just be challenging us and then we pray. Revelations 5. Thank you, Jesus. Adonai Lamb of God You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign in my life Adonai Adonai, 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 Lamb of God, you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, King of kings, Lord of lords, Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Sing Adonai, Adonai. Adonai, 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 Adonai. Revelations five verse eight. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps. And golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Let's read verse 9 together. Verse 9, 1 to read. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. It says, For thou was slain, and thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Next verse. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign where? We shall reign where? It's in your Bible. It says, He has redeemed us. Calling us out of every kindred, every tongue, every nation. Can I tell you something? We represent different kingdoms, different cultures, different mindsets, different ideologies. We are coming from different parts of this country and outside of this country. But the Bible says that through the shed blood of the living Son of God, He has called us 
from our different places with our culture, our tradition, our mindset, our limitations. He has called all of us and brought us into one family. And from that family he has exalted us. So that we become kings and priests that will reign now here in this earth. I hope you understand that John saw the things that were, the things that are, and the things that will happen thereafter. And part of his findings was that he saw that they sang a new song. This was a song that they were singing in heaven. They were singing melodies and saying, Worthy, qualified is he who is worthy to open the book. John first shared on the breaking of the seals. Hallelujah. To open the book and unlock the seals. It says, For thou hast redeemed the word us. There is wrong. It's supposed to be them. Because the ones singing in heaven are not the redeemed. We are the ones who they did not benefit from the. I hope you realize that these were the elders and the beings in heaven. They were not the saints who were singing. So it's supposed to be, Thou hast redeemed them. Not us As is used there Anyway that's just for your knowledge and understanding Thou hast redeemed them unto God By thy blood Calling everyone through the blood of Jesus I enter the holy of holies So from Adamawa Through the blood From Lagos Through the blood From Plateau State Through the blood Are you listening to me? From Abuja Through the blood Calling everyone out of every kindred, come. Your religion is to do this, come. You're coming, come. Calling people, come out of every kindred. Yes, we we drink the blood of bulls and goats, come. We don't believe in any marriage, just come. We are we are failures in life. Come. No, no, I, I won't use you. Come, 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 come. Come from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, whether it's in the map of this country or not. Say after me, I am called. The blood speaks. I hope you realize that. The Bible tells us that the blood speaks. It speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel speaks vengeance. The blood of Christ speaks mercy. Beckoning on men. Let me tell you what mercy is. Mercy is God exempting you from a punishment that you deserve. Grace gives you what you do not deserve. Mercy exempts you from what you deserve. The punishment that you deserve. Are you following me now? And so, every man according to God's justice is supposed to die for his sins. I hope you know that. When Adam sinned, he died. In the days of Noah, when they sinned, what happened? They died. But the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ being the veil between the inner court and the most holy place, allowing the sword of men to pierce him as that veil, and his blood invites men. He says, Come, and you say, Lord, I'm limited. He said, No, my blood qualifies you. Mercy said, No. I'm not gonna let you go. God bless you. Sit down. I'm not gonna let you sleep away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy Hallelujah. So every time you come from your kindred, our tribes and our cultures have their limitations. There are different tribes and cultures that are associated with different things. Are you listening to me? Associated with weakness, with sickness, with defeat, with failure, with all kinds of things. And the blood gives us a platform. And the king begins to call people out of every kindred. I'm trying to give you a, a drama of what was going on in heaven. They said, worthy. Worthy. Worthy is he that is qualified to call men in spite of their limitations. Any excuse you give, the blood covers. Let me tell you something about the blood. You see, two things. I'll tell you two things about the blood that will encourage you as we continue. Number one, 
everything that is seen through the blood is called holy. Anything. Just anything that is seen through the blood. And when God was giving them a prototype of the tabernacle, He told them that in the most holy faith, this was, in the most holy place, this is the instruction, that the high priest would never come in without blood. Are you listening to me? Because in the most holy place, there was the shibboleth and then the mercy seat. Two, two cherubims that protect the holiness of God. Made of pure gold. Overlaying them is what we call the mercy seat. Are you listening to me? Now, the priest, because there was no light in the most holy place. Are you following me now? The glory of God, the literal Shekinah of God is what gave light. And so once a year, in an event we call in the Jew, Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, where the entire nation of Israel will come together, and then the high priest that has been anointed to offer sacrifice on behalf of the people. Now, according to Jewish customs, the lamb had to be a year old, because the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement. Are you following me now? And so the lamb had to be a year old without blemish. And the priest would sanctify himself lest he die beholding the holiness of God. And because the people are not sure whether God will accept him, they would tie a chain around his leg as he marches to the most holy place. Because God is so holy, he cannot behold iniquity. And so there will be people standing in the inner court. So that in an event where the high priest is not qualified by God's standard, he will drop dead there immediately. And they will use the chain to draw him out. Are you following me now? And so the high priest, the nation of Israel, would stand in fear, hoping that God will accept their sacrifices through the high priest. Are you listening to me? And then the high priest full of every kind of fear will begin to take steps into the most holy place the moment he opens the curtain before he enters the first thing that will enter is the blood are you listening to me the blood is held in a a bowl and so he would enter with the blood and immediately pour the blood upon the mercy seat so that when god looks at the mercy seat because you see inside of the ark of the covenant were three things Number one, the Ten Commandments that contains the judgment of God over men. And every man had fallen short of it. Number two, the rod of Aaron that budded. Hallelujah. Symbolizing the life-giving presence of the Spirit. Number three, the, the bread, a sample of the manna that fell from heaven that will not decay. Typifying the divine life. The quality and the power of the word of God. These were the three things that were in the most holy place. I mean in the Ark of the Covenant. And if the eyes of God were to look at the covenant without the blood. He would see the Ten Commandments. And everyone has broken it. So God will be compelled to execute judgment. Otherwise he will fail to be God. Are you listening to me? Because I the love. Love justice and i hate wickedness so before the lord will look down the high priest will pour the blood so that when god looks he doesn't see the ten commandments again all he sees is the blood and because of that blood suddenly the shekinah of god will descend from above physically evidently the entire nation of israel will see the shekinah the light the glory the power of God and it will come and light up the most holy place and it's a symbol that their sins had been atoned for for one year and then the nation of Israel this one time will have the opportunity to say Yahweh the only time they are allowed to call the name Yahweh Yahweh you are glorious so glorious in your way and when Jesus showed up, the Bible makes us to understand that one thing to make us eternally acceptable before the Father, Jesus had an idea and he became the Lamb. At the same time, he became the High Priest. And the Bible says he sacrificed himself and he took his blood. 
when Mary wanted to touch him when he resurrected, said, Do not touch me. She said, Rabboni, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended. What was this ascending to do? To enter the most holy place. There is a real tabernacle like that in heaven. It was what Moses saw that he reproduced on earth. Because according to the law of the Spirit, it is always reproduced in the earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus, wearing his priestly robe, follow me. When he resurrected, he stood with his blood. And went into that most holy place. The very throne room. And went to the tabernacle and offered his blood. And said, these ones for every man. Born of a woman. That washes our sins away. Lamb of God, I worship you. And listen, the implication is this. Every time you want to approach the Father, the condition to approach the Father, let me use someone, Sam, please come. Do I, can anybody help me with a veil? I like using this. Any veil or something. Thank you. Watch this. This is called righteousness. Say after me, righteousness. The condition to approach the Father is that you must possess this quality called righteousness. The ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of condemnation. Are you listening to me? Without a sense of sin. Are you listening to me? From the time man fell, no man, and the condition is that your righteousness must equate that of Jesus. That's the only condition to be able to approach the Father. And so, through the law, the prophets and everyone, they tried to be righteous, but their righteousness was short of that of Jesus. Are you listening to me? And then Jesus had this idea. When he shed his blood, he now said, Sam, you can come to the Father. But every time Sam wants to walk, his kindred, his tribe, the tongue and where he's coming from, reminds him that there are certain things that will not qualify him. And then the Christ says, If you believe in my substitutionary sacrifice, then I give you my righteousness. Come. Every time the devil wants to accuse you, listen, when God looks at you, he doesn't just see you. He sees the blood of his son upon you. And that's what makes you holy. You are not just holy because of a lot of religious things. You are holy on account of what Christ has done. It is the activity of that spirit of holiness that causes you to begin to, to reveal the what we call the deeds of holiness. Because of the presence of the spirit of God. Are you listening to me? So he calls you out of every tribe, out of every kindred, and when you say I'm not qualified He says no Come and reign with me My blood qualifies you If you do not have this revelation You will never be able to approach the father To rule and to reign with him The basis of the believer's victory Is hinged on the substitutionary work Of the living Christ The blood that opens up the door I hope you realize That when Jesus said it is finished There was a cut from the top of the veil right there you know what let me tell you something you may not have observed in your bible do you realize that many years when the ark of the covenant was captured for a second time it was captured once and with dancing and singing david took it back but a prophecy came that it will be captured the second time and it will not return but the religious people still preserve the veil and they lied to the people there was the ark of the covenant there because when it tore they did not see anything inside when the veil tore they did not see any most holy place again jesus said let me reveal to you the deceit of religion that brings you to a point of piety and wants you to attain righteousness a means outside of Christ. So the life of the believer is in Christ. With Christ. In Christ. With Christ. Never without Him. In Christ. He is our sufficiency. In Christ. Reigning with Christ. Living in Christ. Hidden in Christ. Above with Christ. That becomes the language of the believer on account of what Christ has done. So that, listen, listen. 
The implication of this is not just for you to know that the blood has paved way for you to come according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 I believe. It said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. So you can come boldly without a sense of timidity. Not because of what you have done. This is what the problem with religion. We feel that we have done all of the rituals we can do. And on account of that, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. And so he calls you. Say after me, in Christ, I am the righteousness of God. Say, in Christ, I am the righteousness of God. God bless you Sam That means you do not need to do more To be accepted There is nothing you will do That will make God accept you more than he has accepted you Look up But you will need to do more To be used by God This is where A lot of people miss it out To be accepted does not mean To be relevant and to be used Are you following me now Reigning with Christ the first revelation is that the blood has given you access If you are writing right The blood of Christ gives you access to the throne You cannot talk about reigning without a throne The blood of Christ gives you access Your access to ruling and reigning Is not on account of what you have done It's on account of everything Christ has done from then on, the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He becomes your sufficiency. It is always with Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and for Christ. In Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live yet not I But Christ that lives in me And the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God And He called us And we didn't just stop at the gates I hope you realize We did not stop at the door of the throne room He said still come And feeling unqualified He says just come And takes us to his very throne and says sit with me in royalty That's what makes you more than a conqueror A conqueror is one who fought the battle I follow me now You fought the battle They beat your face like you came out from a meat machine You still won You are a conqueror And then you take the present you won And stagger your way to your wife And say sweetheart you have this She's more than a conqueror That's why the church is called the bride of Christ More than conquerors That's not to say we are more than Christ it's to say by grace He loves us so much that He has exalted us And brought us to that point of royalty It's important you understand That the blood gives us access Are you listening to me? And as far as the Father is concerned Our access does not just stop at the gates That we follow right through And sit Let me tell you something about sitting A king never sits until there is victory in his territory are you listening to me? When a king sits in Jewish days, it's proof that it is finished. So when Jesus said it is finished, he didn't put Satan as a factor. He said it is sure finished. Are you following me now? There is a revelation that will give you authority in this realm. And he brought you. And he made you a partaker of his divine life. Partaker. Of his divine life Not a partaker of his throne alone A partaker First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Okay can we have it in the slide First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says According as his divine power Second Peter Is it first or second Second Peter I'm sorry Chapter 1 verse 3 According as his divine power Has given us all things Not some things All things That pertain unto life and godliness how through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us these great exceedingly great and precious promises that by this we might be partakers of his divine life having escaped the corruption through loss hallelujah and so he brings us to that point where we are partakers we are 
joint heirs. Joint heirs. Joint heirs. Let me show you what a joint heir is. Sweetheart, come. Jangfa, permit me to use Bridget for a minute. Appreciate this great woman of God. Now, listen. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free. I just spoke a language. It's none of your business. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen. If I own an estate, follow me. Please follow me. I need you to get a revelation of what it means to be joint heirs with Christ. If I own an estate, are you listening to me? Assuming, God forbid, this is just an example. Assuming this is one cleaner, one regular cleaner in the estate. Are you following me now? Who comes to clean maybe the bathrooms or something? And as the CEO of that estate, I suddenly come and get married to her. Now, whether she feels qualified or not, does not stop the fact that she has become the wife of the CEO of that estate. The moment we say, I do, it doesn't matter who hates her or who doesn't like her. There is a present tense reality that this has become the CEO's wife. Are you following me now? That means she's entitled to all the blessings and the rights and the benefits that follows that position. It's not about what she has done. It's called a positional advantage. Are you listening to me? Now, she goes back to her colleagues that they used to sweep together. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm standing by your side. Jamfa will be a good caretaker. Hallelujah. Listen. Together, she has a right to tell the driver, the driver who has been insulting her every day, say, please take me to the market. He can murmur, but he will still keep the car. This is not about what he wants. It's about an instruction. Are you listening to me? In the kingdom, we do not function because of any power of ourselves. We are the bride of this king called Christ. The body that he uses to operate. So when you come and look at a door and say, that door be open. They may murmur. That's the reason why I don't have any business discussing with demons when I'm casting out demons. That they are not go out. It's not whether you want to or not. I give an instruction as touching a kingdom. Are you listening to me? When there's a challenge in your life, you stand and say, Satan, you are looking at me alone, but let me introduce the second person to you. Or rather, let me tell you that I'm the second person in this equation. There is one who is mightier than I. Young Gicho calls him my senior partner. The one who represents the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? Whether you believe it or not, there is a crown upon your head. Sit down. Thank you very much. Are you listening to me? Christ has brought it to you. But now, although that is a reality from God's perspective, it takes knowledge through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for you to begin to walk in that reality. Are you listening to me? So, in the mind of God, He does not see any reason why Satan should prevail over you. He does not see any reason why we should be weak and beggarly under the elements of this life. Number one, because he has given you his divine life. The presence of God. The Holy Spirit. Who represents the government of heaven. He lives in you. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. The life. The very life of God. Not the type. God didn't give us a type of his spirit called holy. No. The very spirit. If that same spirit. That resurrected Christ. Is it in your Bible? Romans chapter 8 verse 11 If that same spirit I believe, am I right? That same spirit That resurrected Christ From the dead Lives in not just your spirit Your mortal body I, I have a mission To convince you tonight And bring you to that point Where you realize that you are not ordinary Nobody will preach me Into believing I'm an ordinary person are you listening to me? No. You are not. This is not about bragging and talking. It's a reality that you did not even participate in. God brought you into that reality. And he says you are divine. So his life flows through you. His life flows all over you. The essence of the presence of God. Revealing the power, the life, the glory of God to people. Hallelujah. 
that you are ruling and reigning with Christ. Say after me, with Christ. That statement with Christ is the basis of your dominion in this kingdom. Because many people do things, we rule and reign with prayer. Listen, we rule and reign with confession. We rule and reign with fasting. We rule and reign with diligence, with character. As good as those things are, they are only helping you to understand the with Christ concept. In the realm of the spirit, there is only obedience to one name. Christos. The Christ. Are you listening to me? So if I fast and I pray and I study the word of God, if I am not in Christ, have you seen a lot of people do different activities that should bless them, yet you cannot trace the blessing in their life? It's questionable. They are not doing it with revelation. Two people can fast. Hallelujah. Two people can fast. Let me use Manasseh. He just finished a 70 day fasting. So, two... <laughs> you people are laughing. There are two ways to get it. Go to Juju or listen to what I'm telling you. Are you listening to me? That's why we are all not fat. How about that? <laughs> Let me use Manasseh. Come, sir. Now, listen to me. Listen. If he is fasting, and as much as 70 days is, he stretches 70 days without revelation, you just performed an excellent religious exercise. A painful one for that matter. And there are many, listen. God bless you. There are many people who do vigils every day. They pray every day. The strength of your, your, your Christian exercise is revelation. There are people who pray in tongues without revelation and get angry at others and say, I'm praying just like this guy is praying. There must be something this guy is doing, Jerry. We are doing the exact same thing. You blow air on your cup, your spoon, nothing falls. You are angry. You are just frowning at everybody. It takes revelation. I am every time, let me tell you something. Every time I stand to minister to a sick body, Humanly speaking, you look at this sick body. There's cancer. Are you following me now? There is no human way. Or there's need for a new heart. How in the world is a new heart going to come? From your head? Are you following me now? But every time I stand, suddenly, the Lord does this every time. And when He does it, I feel the presence of God. Suddenly, when I stand... When there is any sense of discouragement, suddenly the Lord shows me in a split second the vision of the cross. He just reminds me, son, with Christ. The moment he says that the anointing comes upon me. And then I can tell the person, these hands I'm laying, they are the hands of two people. First, of the one seated upon the throne. Number two, the vessel he's using. On account of this, I command a new heart. Or I command cancer to die. Or I come everything I do in life. I do it with partnership. The concept of partnership is a revelation that the believer must know. That's the reason why you can't destroy me. It's not pride. You know how many meetings we have gone to. Only God knows how many poisons. We eat everything they give us. Imagine somebody like me who will not everything. They will just give you collect and put in your mouth. None of us that has for one night, as far as I know, roll on the bed and say, Ah, there's no time for that. We walk ourselves from day to night. There are times that almost two or three days stretch, no sleep. And I'm not exaggerating what I'm saying, I'm not saying you should practice that. We are not just doing a purposeless staying awake so that you stand and you put pins on your eyes and say, I must do it. Nah, that's religion. Lie down and sleep and God rested. You must rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I'm just provoking you. This is just a charge. With Christ. With Christ. With Christ. You're writing a book, no ideas. With Christ. I'm reigning with Christ. I tap from his authority. I'm not alone with Christ. We're doing this ministry with Christ. We are blessing you with Christ. 
you are watching one person but there's the activity of the spirit of god he's coming to you and causing the world to come alive in your spirit that's what we cannot do we can recite nice poems on stage that cannot bring transformation that's the reason why i can be minding my business over there and someone is standing peacefully and the next thing you find people blowing air for you what happened partnership the holy spirit is trusting and blessing people causing the world to prosper in your spirit and that's how i rule and reign let me tell you i have zero tolerance for nonsense in my life zero tolerance hallelujah i don't take failure as a friend i don't entertain discouragement with christ i don't see limitations in my life i repented from seeing limitations a long time ago i don't see limitations the only thing that limits me is the principles of the kingdom that there is a time for everything there is nothing you are ruling and reigning with christ you come to that point where the word of god is in your mouth and when you speak things will happen as though christ himself spoke because you are with him rise up and walk will keep embarrassing you until the day you say it with christ the, um, the sons of Skiva thought he was just rise up and walk say we are for you and then they close to make a name for themselves and the demon said every time i look at people i see partnership you are lonely i didn't see jesus walking alone i didn't see paul walking alone i see all of you alone one with the holy spirit is an awesome wonder say after me i am seated with christ far above sickness next week is our miracle service it will be another opportunity i love it so much i love times that demonstrate the superiority and the authority of the kingdom you must have zero tolerance for anything that is not in heaven in your life can i tell you something it doesn't matter how many times you go to the hospital don't be discouraged but don't tolerate it are you listening to me if you must take the panadol take the panadol with a revelation and say look i'm not just taking this because i'm weak i'm accepting the fact that i'm a student in the school of the spirit give me time i may take three steps and start sinking a day will come my shadows will heal the sick So do not be discouraged. Every time we talk about this issue of sickness, people just shrink away and say, Ah, you are touching this one now. So no, 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 no. There must be a dissatisfaction. There is nothing I touch that doesn't get blessed. I have programmed my mind to believe that I'm a blessing. If I sit on this chair and you sit on it, something good must happen to you. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a ritual. If I don't bless you, the Holy Spirit will bless you. That's why I can never be a failure. As a person, if I fail, there is one that covers me. It's called Paracletus. Truly, the believer is an unbeatable person. That's why when you fall, there's no room to say my trouser is dirty. Stand up and keep moving. One who reigns with Christ refuses to see limitations in your life. There's poverty ravaging your family. You challenge yourself and say, In Christ, in Christ, I am coming. In Christ, ideas are coming. You are limited in many areas in your life. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, I reign with Christ. I have been called out of the limitation. People say in your village, nobody builds a house. Not without Christ, yes. Confession without Christ is useless. Fasting without Christ is useless. Church without Christ is useless. But in Christ and with Christ, all things are possible. And people say when you get to a 30 or 35, there's a plague of death that kills you. In Christ. You begin, the Bible says you are hidden with Christ. And Christ in God. There's a revelation that sets you free. Do you not realize that it's a risk for us to be ministers of the gospel and then moving without some kind of security things? We don't hide our numbers from them. There was a time they were saying they call 
one MTN something that you call and then you go mad. In my mind I say, oh God, I pray. I always pray the prayer of Jesus. That runaway prayer is not the prayer of Jesus. Jesus said, I pray that you don't take them out. Stay there and prove that I am victorious. You call me and heaven is saying hello through the phone. This is my mindset. I'm telling you this is my mindset. Now I know that many of us can feel spooky and religious about what I'm saying. But it must crystallize in your spirit. You are supernatural. Not because you are called apostle or prophet. Because you are engrafted in Christ. So you are supernatural. Are you listening to me? You are supernatural. Every one of you. My brother, you are supernatural. Stand up. As, as much you are supernatural. You are not ordinary. You are supernatural. Stop being afraid of the business that you are doing. You started it. Shut it down because you are afraid. You are supernatural. Hallelujah. You are absolutely supernatural. The life of God is in you. You cannot fear their fears. Are you listening to me? I refuse to be afraid in this life. It's an audacity that the word of God gives. It's not about your statue. It's not about your age. Whether or not your name is in. There is nowhere that God says I should go that I cannot go. There is nothing he says that I cannot do. Because every time God speaks, he's walking with me. And the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. We are doing this ministry together. That's why koinonia is called intimacy and what? Partnership. Partnership with the Holy Spirit. You are a king. There's dominion upon you. Your words are powerful. Are you listening to me? Every time you speak, every time you hear us emphasize, don't speak rubbish. Don't command failure. Job was asked a question. He said, Job, hast thou commanded thy morning? He asked Job a question. He said, Job, have you commanded your morning? And have you commanded the constellations to line up? Many of us walk into our lives and hope that in the by and by, things will change. I refuse to be silent. I reign. I reign. I command my morning. There is dominion and there is authority. That's the reason why if I prophesy to you that you are blessed. Listen, let me tell you, you are blessed. Because when I say you are blessed, I put in motion the power and the ability of the one who is in partnership with me. Do you realize you are not ordinary? All those cats crying and things disturbing your room when you enter a throne. There is a whole throne in that room. Carry that mindset. Satan does not have a right to wake me from sleep. There are only two reasons why I don't sleep. One, because I'm thinking or I'm planning. I don't spend, none of us spend more than 10 minutes to sleep. We walk ourselves to tiredness. When we lie down, we bless the Lord. I don't pray that fearful prayer. Oh God, if it's your will that I see tomorrow. Are you joking? There is work to be done. I'm aware that not many people are yielded to God. So I'm valuable. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray but I'm challenging you. There is a mindset. I am reigning with Christ. No limitations. I am reigning with Christ. When I speak, I speak on behalf of the government of heaven. When I bless, I bless on behalf of him. You need to carry. You have been blessing people from your power and might. You have not been doing it with Christ. The language tonight is with Christ. He walks through me. He talks through me. I may be ordinary but he lives through me. When I look at people, he is through me. When I bless you, he is touching you. When I speak to you, he is speaking to you. With Christ. I reign with Christ. I do business with Christ. I do ministry with Christ. I bless people with Christ. I can never be short of ideas. I'm with Christ. 
I refuse to be under. If you see me under today, give me time. I'm coming because I'm with Christ. Am I challenging you? And you get up and lock yourself and say, I have been called out of my tribe. Yes, nobody has ever worked in the embassy in your village. You are with Christ. Let every limitation be broken. We all came from places that are not celebrated. I am reigning, seated with Christ. It's no limitation. You came here from your various homes. Not because of jazz. Because of the authority. The compelling power that the partnership of Christ brings in your life. And now that you know you are a king, you begin to decree and legislate on behalf of heaven. You don't just speak as an ordinary person. See, I'm not talking about the fact that someone comes and just touches your head and you slap the person and say, do you know I'm a king? That's foolishness. That's not spiritual maturity. Foolishness. Not teaching you to just stand and brag and make noise. But I'm telling you that there is a revelation in you. I can never have lost that ability to pity myself. No, sir. It's impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible to sit down and pity myself and say, Ah, God, I wish I were like Aaron. What? What wish would you have again? You are in partnership with the king. I'm seated with Christ. All authority in heaven and the earth was vested in Christ. And I occupy that office with Him in glory. I'm above sickness. I say it. I'm above failure. I'm above limitation. Demons are not my problem. I know that disobedience is my greatest obstacle. I have no regard whatsoever for Satan. I'm telling you. Ask Him. I have no regard whatsoever for Him. Zero tolerance. You must, many of us have this nice way of negotiating with Satan. Can you leave me for two days and then come back again? We have never come back from a crusade and then hold two weeks marathon training, preservation prayer. In fact, we just, those of you who have followed us for crusades, we just and play and sleep as we are coming back. You really think if Satan had the power to kill you, he would not. I've always said this. When a demon is hitting your zinc or making noise, you know, ladies, all these things, tell the demon, why don't you come? What's the disturbance for? Smith Wigglesworth came out and saw a demon rocking a chair in his house, a physical demon. He wiped sleep and came out and when he saw the chair, he looked, he said, so is you. He turned back and went to sleep. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not faking it. It's true. John C. Lake, understanding that he's a king with Christ. No disease or sickness could touch him. Spokane was, was said to be the, the healthiest city in the whole world. E.W. Kenyon was a man who was so angry, nobody died less than 17 in his church. He would look at a bone that is cracked with his eyes and it would start cracking back and the person would jack up. These are not people. Their books are there. Go and read it. Men who walk with Christ. There was a monk who they were trying to put wood in the church and the wood was short. He held it and completed it. with Christ that you rule and reign can I tell you something as we round up somebody may be asking me and said if I'm with Christ why do I look weak and beggarly why do I look oppressed let me tell you Galatians chapter 4 quickly first let's go to Job 5 quickly the book of Job and let me tell you how God speaks Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tonight is an admonition. I'm angry, my spirit. Sorry, Job, Judges. Kabosa Brandi Gebara Sufa Sidakaya. Judges 6. The 
because we are going to pray listen this is the season where you will reign without limitation there is great grace and god wants to produce glory out of your life you cannot bless people when you are still suffering what they are suffering i exempt myself verse 11 and there came an angel of the lord and sat under an oak which was in offer and pertained to joash the abbey's right and his son gideon treasured with by the press to hide from the midianites now this was gideon because of the oppression that had happened to them the midianites gideon was the least in his father's house and his tribe was the least the bible says he was hiding to secretly thresh something because every time they thresh it they had some bullies who would come are you listening to me they would come and bully them just like satan does to all of us let me tell you i was so oppressed by satan for a long time in my life every time i sleep i've shared my story demons i literally have visions of demons walk into my room and they oppress me so once it's evening i keep smiling but people don't know what is going on and one day light came into my spirit that i'm seated with christ above not below above above hallelujah i i i was staying in area bz I ran to Area BZ. I ran to Area BZ. And I stood outside near my BQ. And I shouted. I said, that demon that comes to oppress me, I invite you this night. That's what I said. If demons are disturbing you, just tell them to come and pay us a visit. Have a pleasant experience. Ah, Josh, don't talk like that. Oh, we have seen men of God that have spoken like this and demons dealt with them. I don't know what they believed. But I know I'm sitting with Christ. I had a dream. Let's continue. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Now, Gideon was hiding. I follow me now. But hear what the angel, I, I hope you understand that word angel is the Lord himself. And said, the Lord is with thee. Thou what? Thou what? God does not call you by your past or present. He calls you based on how He sees you. He calleth things. Seeing a man who is hiding, He calls him a mighty man because He has seen the end of His life that this guy is a warrior. So every time you dream, you see yourself conquering territories and you wake up and you are afraid. And God says, When will you begin to call yourself what I am calling you? We have called ourselves what our villages have called us. I refuse to be named after my past. I refuse to be named after my limitation. I bear the name that symbolizes my authority and victory in Christ. Am I challenging you tonight? Because we are going to pray. He said, O oh mighty man of Velo. One more verse. Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this. So he had might. Although he was hiding. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. That it is according to the power. That might that is in us. It's always according to that might. You are anointed. Are you listening to me? Let me, let me walk up to some people behind and challenge them. Those who never feel that they are anointed. Sister, you are more than anointed. Are you listening to me? You are more than anointed. Are you listening to me? I'm very serious. I'm not just trying to preach. You are really anointed. You must have this revelation. Don't just stand and think these are the anointed men. No. You are not anointed because hands were laid on you. You are anointed every time you come into partnership with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And you are above. You are above. Do not allow the devil If you allow Satan He will spit out your bones He will wreck your life Refuse it You must stand and legislate Hear me inside and outside The Lord is challenging us tonight I see a mystery under the sun Servants Ride on horses While princes are walking afoot But that we need to change it I am not alone I am with Christ Rise up on your feet with Christ 
reigning with Christ. With his blood, he paid the price. Paid the price to bring us to that point of authority. Don't wait until you get into ministry. Challenge that sickness with Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I am not a failure, Professor. I can never be a failure. I refuse to be weak and beggarly. I want everybody to pray. This is not a prayer for men of God. Inside and outside. Prophesy. I reign in this life. I've been called out. Called out of every limitation. I've been called out by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray. Declare. I am anointed. Say it. I am anointed. Say it. Declare. I am anointed. The Holy Ghost lives inside of me. I can heal the sick. I can cast out devils. My words are powerful. Producing results. I like you to pray. I can effect change in my life. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're praying. Come on, pray in the spirit. We have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. I'm anointed above failure, above limitation. Come on, pray. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. You are a king seated with Christ, ready with Christ over your finances, over your health. I receive and I walk in the fullness of all the blessings that are associated with reigning with Christ. Divine health, prosperity, joy, peace, authority, favor, grace, glory. I am prosperous. I am blessed. I am well favored in Christ. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Over your family, declare. Over your family, declare. Over your finances, declare. Tomorrow breathe. I have no fear. All the world tomorrow breathe. I like you to repeat it. I have no fear. I have no fear. All the world tomorrow breathe. I have no fear. I have no fear. All the world tomorrow breathe. I have no fear. I'm 
Like a bow, bold as a lion. I refuse to fear, no failure, no limitation. I am a king. Prophesy to yourself. Say I'm royalty. I like a lady who came out and said I'm a princess. No inferiority. No inferiority. No complex. Let it die tonight. Let inferiority die. Let every complex die tonight. I am the best that I can be. I am the best that I can be. Hallelujah. The best that I can be. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Hear me. Can I tell you something? When you walk in this consciousness, Satan will be far from you. No matter how a madman is, he doesn't enter fire. No matter how mad, people say he doesn't know, you will not know whether it's five naira or ten naira. Set fire and see if you come and enter it. No matter how mad he claims to be, he knows what fire is. The Bible says he maketh his angels wind spirit and his ministers flames of fire. Can I tell you something? Refuse to allow the things that you see govern you. After, if I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is by his stripes, I am healed. I believe the word of God more than the results it will produce in my life. Are you listening to me? Hold the hands of somebody. Pair yourselves into two. We're going to take the last prayer point. Now, take it seriously. This is not the time to just be nice and try to check your revolve. We are going to pray. Listen. Listen. You are going to prophesy. Are you listening to me? Take it seriously. Some of you are just smiling. Hold the hands of somebody. Hallelujah. We are going to prophesy. You are going to speak. Now that you know you are anointed inside outside. The Holy Ghost is there. Call the person blessed. Use your kingly authority. Come on, saints of God. Kings, priests, command their morning. Cause the stars, the constellations to align for their favor. And the stars fought for Deborah. And the stars fought for Deborah. We command nature. We command the elements, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, to align in your favor. Bringing you victory. Bringing you grace. Prophesy. Make sure you are speaking. You are blessed. You are the head. You are not the tail. You are above. You are not beneath. Death is far from your life. Sickness is far from your life. Poverty is far from your life. Whatever you touch is blessed. Whatever you touch is blessed. Blessings on your finances. On your spiritual life. Your ears are open to hear the voice of the Spirit. Your eyes are open to see realities in the realm of the spirit every inferiority dies in your life you are rising higher higher you are walking in favor you are walking in glory prophesy speak over your neighbor and watch the power of the authority of Christ in you at work
Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you speak upon is blessed. Come on, tell him you are blessed. You are blessed, blessed, blessed beyond the curse. Break sickness from their lives. Break sickness from their lives. Break the bondage of sickness, the bondage of poverty, the bondage of failure. You do it. Don't wait for a man of God. You are anointed. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me, I declare that I am great. Inferiority dies from my life. I refuse to be inferior. I am above. Say it one more time. I'm above. Say I am anointed. I'm seated with Christ. I am royalty. I refuse sickness. I refuse poverty. I refuse failure. I embrace the glory of God. I embrace the grace of God. I am one with Christ. I am victorious in this world. I see no limitations. I am victorious. One more time, I am victorious. Give God a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. So, go back to your job. Go back to your class. Go back. Are you listening to me? Go back to your family members. Go back to your roommates. Go back to your class members. Go everywhere and tell them a message. The message is that with Christ you are above. That's the message. With Christ you are above. Listen. It's an assignment. Throughout this week, it must be your confession. When you are walking, walk conscious of the fact that you are with Christ. And whatever was not permitted to be found in the life of the living Christ, refuse it. Reject it. People may criticize you. Reject it. They will not be there to sympathize with you. Reject it. Don't wait for somebody to do it for you. There are people you will be inviting to come for miracle service. There are some of them that the moment you call them, the Lord will give you a word of knowledge about their case. Don't sit down there and say, hey, hey, am I qualified? Mercy qualifies you. Lay hands on the person and say, thou devil and come. Whether they call you pastor or pastor's wife, that's none of your business. When they call you at home and say, the landlord is coming to kick us out next week. I like it, say, all right, all I need you to do at home is cheer up. You shut down your phone. And say, Lord, are you not called the father of spirits? Every man's spirit is in your care. There are rich spirits on the earth. I call them. Call the father of spirits. Hallelujah. There's one scripture we're going to be studying this week. Hallelujah. Job 22 verse 28. That's going to be our verse of study as we prepare for the miracle service. Job 22 verse 28 It says And ye shall decree a thing And it shall be established unto thee Please meditate I know many of you know the verse of heart But it has not changed your life That means the light has not entered your spirit Hallelujah Organize Bible studies with it Call your friends Your enemy is the person that comes to distract you When you are studying that scripture Hallelujah Pray it I prayed about the creative power of the spoken word and I used Ezekiel chapter 37 when God was showing me. I first saw it in the life of Bishop Oedeko and I saw it in the life of Kenneth Copeland. 
is not a very charismatic man who will lay hands on you. But if that man sends a word in your destiny, it will shatter your life and bring the Garden of Eden out of you. I said, Lord, there's something. There's something about this. And the Lord led me. He said, let me show you what I showed them. The Bible says he confirms the word of his messengers and performs the counsel. There's no word of a king that goes without And that means There are many of you who are experts in using Vulgar and ungodly language Welcome architect Everybody here is an architect from this night When you design nonsense The Lord will lift it before your eyes Like what fell over Peter And God will say Look at what you have been drawing There are many of us who have been drawing rubbish We speak every kind of thing I'm a failure It's not for people like us Ah, that my big head. Hallelujah. 